Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here for a science fiction and a fantasy wrap up and review video. And I have to admit that this is a little bit different than usual, so I don't want anyone to panic. This is not going to become my new norm, but this video is a little bit more heavy on fantasy. And if you're new to my channel, you should know that I am much more team sci-fi. I'm not playing for the other team, but I have just for whatever reason read more fantasy in the last couple weeks and these videos aren't something I artificially curate. Instead, it really is just here what I've been reading recently. And I don't know, I think it's just that more fantasy gets published so I have more access to fantasy arcs. But for whatever reason, I ended up with more fantasy. Normally I try to keep my videos at least 60% sci-fi. So don't worry, I will balance it out next time because as soon as I read a bunch of fantasy, I start craving a whole bunch of science fiction. All that being said, I have some great books to talk about, some great recommendations, some underhype books, and some new favorites. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the science fiction I did read and I read The Misfit Soldier by Michael Mammy, and this is a new 2022 release and this one I read via audio through my library. This story follows a soldier who takes on an unofficial mission to save his friend and soldier and so he ends up getting a group together and they go off on this mission. This story kind of hits the beats of a heist story so it's not actually a heist but it fits the same idea where you have someone who is trying to get a job done and so he goes and recruits various people with special talents. This book was very witty. It had a lot of good banter in it. It was a lot of fun. I will say I don't think the character development was the most complex. I don't think the story itself was overly complex. Instead, it was a little bit more tropey. But was it fun? Absolutely. Did it hold my attention? For the most part, yes. I did think that it was easy to fly through. So I do think that if you're someone who enjoys more lighthearted science fiction, this is one to pick up. Technically, it's military science fiction, but it doesn't have that heavy-handed feel, at least not until the end. I will say that this book got much more serious in tone than I expected, but that is not a negative thing. If anything, I enjoy a book that is much more grounded and has a bit more emotional appeal, and so I do think that this book was a really fun ride that ended up with some really good themes and ideas explored at the end. So overall, I really do recommend this one if you're into that type of science fiction, and I enjoyed it. It's my first by the author. I believe he has some backlist, so I definitely want to check out more of his work. Next up we have The Temps by Andrew DeYoung and this is a book I received for review from Turner Publishing and this is technically science fiction because it's set in a post-apocalyptic future but really it reads much more like a literary satire. This book follows a group of temporary employees who go to work for a new company, something goes terribly wrong, there is an outbreak, everyone who is not a temporary employee dies and then the Temps have to survive. So yes it does have that post-apocalyptic apocalyptic angle to the story but really it's much more about the temps and this book is much more a conversation about how certain employees are very disposable and forgettable and of course it particularly focuses on those 20 somethings in our current generation that are really struggling to find their own place they often struggle to find satisfying careers and instead get stuck in these temporary jobs I admit that I am older than that and I didn't actually go through this stage so this book wasn't perfectly tailored to me personally but if you know someone who is in that stage, I think this would be a great piece of fiction to recommend to them if they were kind of looking for something that's a bit cathartic. I thought it was very smart. The narrative moved very quickly with good character work. And again, it was just very on the nose, very smart. And so if you're looking for that, I enjoyed this one. But again, I think someone who is a temporary employee will love this book even more. Now, moving on to fantasy, I want to talk about The City of Dust by Tara Sim. This is a book I received for review from Orbit Books, and this book takes place in a city that connects four different realms. The gods of this world have recently kind of left this realm and this area, and there are four different heirs who are trying to save the city. And so the story is told over four points of view, and I would say for the most part, each of the points of view was equally interesting. The characters felt a little bit younger. Orbit always says that they do publish adult fantasy, but I do feel that this one has a bit more crossover appeal. Not that it was overly immature, but it just had that young adult feeling to it, or at least nothing in this book felt like it made it 
inappropriate for someone who would be younger. That being said, I really love the diversity in this book. There is some queer representation that is just naturally thrown out throughout the story and is just kind of woven into it, which I always appreciate. Given the synopsis of the book, for whatever reason, I expected this book to feel a little bit more unique when it comes to fantasy. I thought it was going to be a little bit more out of the box, perhaps a little bit darker. And I will say that it just felt a little bit more classic than I expected. And not that that's a bad thing, but if you know my taste in fantasy, I do prefer something that does feel a little bit more unique, original, and fresh. And this one just felt, again, a little bit more standard. But if you're someone who loves fantasy and just cannot get enough of the traditional work, this is definitely one that you will want to check out. It is the beginning of a series, probably a trilogy. And I'm intrigued enough that I may continue on. I like this first book, but it just wasn't quite what I hoped it would be. I hoped it would be like a new all-time favorite. And it was just an enjoyable read. Next, I want to talk about a series that I'm currently working through. Normally, I like to wait to review books until I'm all finished up, but because the final book is coming out soon, I wanted to let you know that I'm reading this so that if you want to catch up and read along with me, you definitely can. The books that I received for review from Tor, the first one being The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyon, and all of these have beautiful covers. The second book I have also read is The Name of All Things by Jen Lyons, obviously. The third book, which I'm currently reading through as I record this, is The Memory of souls. And then the fourth book that I need to read in order to be caught up on the series is The House of Always. The fifth book is coming out this spring, I believe in April. That should be The God of Ascent, if I'm saying that right. And I'm really looking forward to that. This is a series that I did not pick up when it first was coming out, and I really enjoy binging through series. So when I got the opportunity to do so with Tor, I was very excited. So I've heard mixed things about this series, so it's one I definitely wanted to check out for myself. And overall, I'll give you the short synopsis that I really did enjoy it. The basic setup for the story is that it is a multiple point of view story that is chronicling the story of a man named Kieran, but it's also telling a much larger story and there are different voices that are contributing to the tale. The actual series is called The Chorus of Dragons and I think it fits really well because again you have these multiple narrators telling the story over time. I don't always love chronicle narration because often I find it can spoil the story, especially if it's told kind of after the fact, but the way that this one is told is so compelling. It is so humorous and the voices are woven together in the best possible way. Oh, and I do need to say with the series title, you might be wondering, does the series actually involve dragons? And yes, it does. And I just got to say that for me, what I love about the series is the storytelling. I think that Jen Lyons is an incredible storyteller because while the story is very long, there are lots of characters, there are lots of places, there are lots of things happening. And again, I struggle to give you a really concise synopsis because the story moves so far from where it starts. But despite that, I enjoyed every moment along the way with the characters. I love the world building. It is complex. It is fascinating and I'm completely here for it. I think this book series is incredibly interesting to read. All of these books contain footnotes, which normally is not something I like to read in stories. I find that they take me out of the narrative because I'm reading the main text and then you have to stop and read the footnotes. But the footnotes are so funny and so insightful and they're just woven into the story in a way that feels oh so natural that I really think that they add so much to the story and I never say that about footnotes. Usually I'm like, ugh, footnotes. But in this case it worked incredibly well. There's also some great diversity within these stories. If you're looking for different representation of gender and sexual identities, you're going to see that explored within these books, especially in the later ones. I found that that was much more explored in book two and the way that it's done is really humorous. I think that it's a really nice way of talking about things on the nose but making it really fun so I do think the author does a really good job of incorporating it in a way that didn't feel heavy-handed but instead just felt hilarious and you kind of have to read it for yourself to understand why those topics could be explored in a hilarious but of course respectful way. So if you can't tell, I'm really enjoying this series. It has been so much fun to binge through, which is definitely my favorite way to work through series. And I will definitely report back once I finish the final books and are caught up and also when the new book comes out. So watch for my updated reviews. But again, if you're someone who is interested in this series and have not yet started, this is the perfect time to do so and catch up. Or for those of you, I think 
a lot of people read book one and liked but didn't necessarily love it and I think stopped the series there. If you are one of those readers, I really encourage you to continue on to book two because in my opinion, like I said, this book was good for me, but this is really this book that made me fall in love with the series and like I said, I'm now currently on book three. I'm about, I think, halfway through and I'm just loving it. I will be surprised if book four is going to change anything. Um, I think I'll just continue to love it more, but definitely I'll come back with a full series of you once I've had a chance to read the final book. Thank you again to Tor Books for sending these all along because it really has been a great opportunity to check out a series I've been meaning to read for way too long. Next, I want to talk once more about the Warbreaker series. The first book I read was called The Mirror Empire. I recently read, reviewed it, and gushed about it, but I didn't have the opportunity to finish up the trilogy. So I give a huge thank you to Angry Robot Books. I politely asked if I was able to get review copies because I wanted to finish out the series. So they sent along a copy of the second book, Empire Ascendant and The Broken Heavens, and these books complete the Warbreaker saga all by Cameron Hurley. And I I absolutely love these books. I basically binged through them as soon as they arrived because I really want to see this series out. And if you're not familiar, I'll give you a recap and try to better explain what the series is about because it's so complex, but I love it a lot and I really want more people to read it because in my opinion, it's a bit of a hidden gem. So this is a multi POV story that is told in a world that is full of destruction and devastation and war. Within this world, there are parallel worlds that over time clash or collide with each other and this devastation occurs. This story is told in a matriarchal society where women rule and so you get to see a flip side of the misogyny that you would normally see in a patriarch society and you get to see that reflected on the page. So I don't think that it's done in a way that like feels very like feminist like oh yay yay women rule. Instead it really is a great nuance in just showing that in a quality in any form, male or female, is just atrocious. And I think that this book is, or the series rather, does an amazing job of showing the brutality of war, which is something that you don't always see in fantasy stories. There are so many military fantasy books out there, but they often tend to glorify war. This one does not. It is brutal and dark, and there are some very memorable scenes, huge content warnings for all sorts of violence and abuse. I compare these books to the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. They're definitely not the same, but I think that they have a lot of similarities. So once again, you have a fantasy series with elements of science fiction, which you know I love. I love the fact that it involves parallel worlds. And how that is explored within this story is absolutely fascinating. And you also get, again, that brutality that you see in N.K. Jemisin's work. But maybe I need to do a reread of the Broken Earth trilogy, but I almost feel like this is more brutal to give you a warning there. But I really enjoy stories that push the limits. I really enjoy stories that make me uncomfortable, that make me think that again are unique and fresh and different. And these books really did that for me. I think of the three books, The Mirror Empire might still be my favorite, but again, that might just be because it introduced me to this new world. But the two books that follow, in my opinion, were really solid. I thought, especially the second book, I really enjoyed. And the third book, again, I just was spending more time in the world. So overall, I really enjoyed these. These are definitely one of my favorite backlist fantasy series that I've read in a while. And I've been reading a lot of good fantasy, so that says a lot. But I gotta say, if you have have not picked these up if you are okay with some really tough subject matter. These ones have some of the most complex character work, some of the most memorable scenes, the most unique world building, and again, world building where the author does not hold your hand. Instead, you have to figure it out as you go along. So I will admit I am determined to reread the series before too long because I really want to spend more time and better understand what is all happening because it's really complex. I keep saying that, but it is. But in the best possible way, I enjoy books that challenge me. I enjoy books that really push me to have to think and use those parts of my brain that I don't always get to use in other parts of my life. So highly recommend this series, these books, the entire series is worth reading in my opinion. And again, the first book is The Mirror Empire. So you do want to start there in order to read them in sequence. And finally, I wanna talk about Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok K. Banker, and this is a start of a new epic fantasy series. It is set in East India, where the story takes place. The author himself is of East Indian descent, so you get that own voices take. The beginning of the story, the very start, follows a burning that takes place where they have to determine the next leaders or rulers of their society. There were two princes that were born on the same day, so they both are put into this fire in order to see if they will survive 
five, and that is supposed to determine the ruler. And this is right on the back of the book, so it's really not a spoiler, but essentially both of them survive, and for the meantime, they decide to have them both rule rather than having to choose between the two. During the burning, there's also a third potential heir that is introduced that possibly has a claim to the throne. The reason they allow or want these two princes to rule together is the fact that they are seen as less worthy because they both have what are described as disabilities. So one of them is blind and then the other one is albino and so he has very light skin that will burn in the sun. And in the society these are definitely looked down upon, these aspects to them. And I will say that the book does a really good job of addressing these issues but is actually done in a very progressive way. As well this book actually addresses some really progressive ideas surrounding uh, female roles in traditional societies. So definitely it's set in a society where women are in a kind of secondary place but the women portrayed in these books are very smart and intelligent and the author is definitely making commentary on these kinds of societies. So I thought this book was very nuanced. It has some fantastic character work. You really do fall in love with the princes or at least in the way of like finding their characters to be very compelling. You get to see as they grow. So it's kind of a coming of age story at the beginning but that's only one piece of the story so it is much more complex. There is a larger war going on, different political leanings, people trying to vie for the throne because again there are other people that believe that they have a stronger claim. So it definitely gives like Game of Thrones vibes particularly if you like the idea of like people vying for the throne. It's highly complex. I actually read it twice before I'm reviewing it now. I did this whole book physically and then I went on and reread it via the audio. And it is a book that I think um, benefits from reading multiple times or just taking your time with it because there's so much going on. That being said, I really did enjoy this and do plan to continue on with the series. I did this as a buddy read with a fellow booktuber, Paulina. I will link her channel down below. I also read it with Mike, but he doesn't have a channel, so sorry, Mike. Uh, so definitely recommend checking out her channel as well. And I gotta say, this was a lot of fun and definitely a good series. The third book is supposed to be coming out this spring, so I'm hoping to catch up so that I can continue on with the saga. Highly recommend if you're looking for something diverse, new, and just again a little bit different. So that is everything for this video. I'd love to know of the books I talked about, which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And again, do not panic if you're here for the science fiction. It will be back in full force in my next science fiction and fantasy wrap up. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read both science fiction and fantasy as well as horror and thrillers. You can help me out by sharing this video around online, giving me a thumbs up, dropping an emoji, even if it's just a comment. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss another video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.